Good afternoon, everybody. Today we are going to review email best practices. This presentation has been brought to you by Cyber Seniors and the New York City Aging Department. The table of contents that we are going to be reviewing today is common email terms, email etiquette, do's and don'ts of email safety, as well as phishing threats. Let's start with some statistics. In 2021, an estimate of 319.6 billion emails were sent and received daily around the world. This figure is projected to increase to 376.4 billion daily emails by the year 2025. If you wonder what is an email, it is a digital letter transfer from one device server to another over an internet connection. You can read that email using a tool known as an email client, and it can be a server such as Gmail, Microsoft, Outlook, Yahoo, AOL, and there will be a little bit more variety when it comes to email servers. What happens when an email shows in your inbox? It usually includes a sender name, the person who is from, and also a subject line, what is the message about. You can open the email and read the content by clicking on the subject line. That is usually the simplest way. Now we are going to move to common email terms. We will look at some email terms you should know. And to start, we have email address. Your email address works online has your virtual identity, allowing people to send you messages. For most sites that require login, you also need an email address to identify your account. The second term we have here is attachment. And this is a file sent along with an email message. And it can be a document such as Microsoft Word and also a picture or photo. The recipient can preview the attachment or download and save it on their device if preferred. We have forward. And if you see this at the beginning of the subject line, it means it was forward to you. In other words, the sender received it in their inbox from somebody else and after send it to you. Finally, on this screen, we have ZC or carbon copy, means that more than one person will get your message at the same time. You can add multiple email addresses to the CC line and it's a great way to keep everyone in the loop on plans or information you want to share, whether it's with family and friends. BCC is blind carbon coping, and it means that you are including an additional recipient or maybe more, but the other recipients cannot see all the other email addresses, only you. Folders, they allow users to organize emails. And for instance, you can create folders under different categories, family, finances, and health. So basically you can place emails into any of these categories and find them in the future much quicker. A spam, these are email messages that you most likely didn't ask for or agree to receive. Most email clients or servers automatically filter out a spam into a folder that can be known as a spam or junk. So it doesn't go directly to you, primary or focused inbox. And here to end, we have email etiquette. 
and this is a set of principles to write or answer emails in a socially or professional acceptable manner. It could include language, a structure, grammar, and also tone. Okay, email etiquette. So writing an email comes down to implementing some basic etiquette. We will see a few tips to get started. On the left side, we have write a clear subject line. Ensure your recipient can understand your email by writing a subject line that conveys your message clearly. For example, webinar February 2023 or last summer photos. Basically, that subject line should give the person an indication about what is the information you are trying to share or communicate to them. Do not use all caps. Sometimes the caps lock can be switched on accidentally and it might not seem like a big deal to keep them activated and keep writing in all capital letters. But typing in all capital letters on the internet tends to be considered confrontational or even interpreted as yelling. Of course, you should be careful what you send. Any email can be forwarded to another person. So keeping private information out from an email message is probably one of the best ideas. Do not reply all. Hitting the reply all button sends the email to everyone who has been cc'd on an email. Unless everyone needs to know what your response is, you should only reply to the person you are trying to respond to, which is often the person who initially sent you that message and is at the top of the email thread. Do's and do nots of email safety. You might think there are no threads in your inbox, mainly if the mailbox contains articles sent from friends, family pictures, and receipts from your purchases or bills. However, it's pretty easy for people to get a hold of email addresses from different sources. So if someone with malicious intent gets your email address, they could send you an email with harmful content for your electronic device. Here we have two of the best practices for email safety. And on the left, we have do not open an email from someone you know. This seems like a common thing, if you receive this type of message, please mark it as spam or delete it. You may even want to block the sender if they are sending this type of communications repeatedly. Do not open an attachment or email if the email is from somebody you don't know or trust. Scammers often load this type of attachment documents with malware, which is a type of software that can compromise your electronic device and most likely the information you have on it. Do not ever send personal information like your social security number or financial details over email. If someone is asking for these things, you should be cautious. If you are entirely sure the purpose is valid, find a more secure way to provide the information to this entity or organization or individual. Learn how to recognize phishing. Let's say you get an email from your bank that looks close enough to every other email communication you have received from them. But this time, they ask you to send personal information immediately or even want you to click a link to go somewhere else on the internet. And finally, we are going to end the slides with phishing 
threats. And these are scams where criminals use convincing fake emails to trick you. A good rule of thumb is to get information before taking immediate action based on what is being said in that email you are receiving. Pick up the phone and call the institution or person who has contacted you, but use a phone number from the company website or even a phone directory. Please do not use the phone number in the email thread because it is most likely unrelated to the actual institution from when is being claimed to be. Common red flags or phishing attempts. We have mistakes in grammar or spelling. Legit organizations occasionally can make mistakes, but it's likely a scam if the message is full of obvious mistakes or errors. The to and the from address can seem fishy. From addresses can be easily forged. Is your email there? Can you see it listed? If it's not, the message is likely a phishing attempt. No personal information in the email. Most institutions you are related to, like your bank or phone internet service provider, have your information on file and will address you by your full name. Hence, a dear customer greeting is most suspicious. Request for personal information. We cannot stress this enough. Susceptible information such as your passwords, bank account numbers, and social security numbers should never be emailed. And please get in the habit of report phishing if you experience this. You can look for the button this is a spam and click it to report that message. If you want to forward the phishing suspected emails, you can do so by going to spam at use.gov and also report phishing at antiphishing.org. If you have information, reliable information on the bank, or company, and even organization that is being impersonated in the phishing email, you might want to use the information that you actually have to reach out to them and report that you are receiving this type of phishing emails. If you have fallen victim to phishing, you can file a report with the Federal Trade Commission or call the 877-438-4338 number to get a hold of an agent. So we are going to move next to the live demonstration and I will be using two of my devices to show you a little bit of email managing. Something common that you will find among electronic devices that you use is that often the electronic device comes with a native mail application, but also you have the ability to download the specific email server. To give you an idea of that, in the iPad or iPhone, you should have a mail application that looks like this. But if you take a look at the right side of my mail application, I also have Outlook, Gmail, and Yahoo Mail, which means that I have the ability to access the particular application of the email server I use. The good thing about the mail application in electronic devices is that allow you to add multiple accounts or email accounts under the same place, whether they are Outlook, Gmail, Yahoo, or even AOL you can have them in the same application as opposed to use different applications to access them. That being said, if you want to use the mail application, in this application at the top, 
left corner, you have something that looks like a square. And if you tap over that, it will show something that is called mailboxes. Mailboxes are no other thing than folders. And some of the folders you have in your email account are often inbox, draft, sent, junk or spam, trash. And if you have multiple emails under the same account, oftentimes you will find all of the messages in the all mail folder. Now, if you go to inbox, this is the place where your messages will arrive. When a message hasn't been read yet, and I'm going to mark this as unread, So in this application in particular, when you have a message that hasn't been read, it will have a dot that indicates the user that there is a new message. When you receive an email, if you pay attention, you have information right at the top of that email. And if you tap in there, it will tell you where is the email coming from, what email account was sent to. This is the email account that I'm using and also what time I received that email. If you find other indicators such as this paperclip icon, it often means that there are attachments to that email and probably you have, apart from the regular message, which is this one right here, you have much more details to see. That is the inbox, basically the place where your messages arrive once you receive one. If I go back to my square at the top left, apart from that, I will have draft. So the draft folder, for instance, emails that you start composing, but you don't send. And whenever you start doing the creation of an email and you forget to send it, or you got occupied or something like that, the email account or email server, we create a copy for you. Say that you want to create a new email. So I'm going to press in my mailbox again, going to the top of the screen and finding this paper with the pen on it, and you can tap in there. There are different components of starting an email. So for instance, you need to write down what person you are sending this message to. That is the CC carbon copy and the BCC blind carbon copy. And the from, which is the email you are sending this message from. If I go to the two part, notice how there is a blinking line right there. And it means you can start using your keyboard to write down the email of the person you are trying to message. If I start typing the email of that person, oftentimes, and if you have been in contact with that person before, your email account will give you suggestions. If you have not been in contact with that person before, it's more likely necessary that you type that email correctly and in full in order to be able to send it. But as you see, I have been in touch with this person before, and of course, is showing has a suggestion from my email account. When I tap over that person, instead of seeing the person's email, I will see their name since that person is already a contact. If I go to the CC and BCC part here, I can include other people so they are aware of this message I'm sending. And the line copy in this particular case, the person that is here will be hidden. Meaning if I have somebody in the copy area, that person will know that I have somebody in the blind copy. That being said, so after you fill this information, so just you carbon copy, blind copy, you can also go to the subject. And the subject should be very straightforward, should be short. You can simply relate to the topic you are looking to talk about with this person. And 
Now what I need to do is tap in here in this blank space to be able to start composing my message. If you ever encounter this option that looks like a microphone, it means that you can use your voice to transcribe your message. So if I tap in that, which is voice dictation, when I talk, whatever I say, it will be transcribed into that message. So instead of actually using my keyboard and my fingertips, since I'm using a touch screen, is easier to actually convey my message with my voice and the voice dictation will allow us to see that on the screen. If I want to get out of here, notice how at the bottom, that is this icon that looks like a keyboard and I can press in there and it will take me back to the regular keyboard. So that is voice dictation. If you are ready to send your message, you can go to the button at the top right corner and your message will be sent. So that's how you send your message. Now, say that you want to open an email and that email is actually something that looks a little bit suspicious and you want to mark that email as spam. If I go to the player FM message that is on my left and I tap over, when I tap over, that information will be open on the right side and I can manage the email. And you have different options at the top, but also you have another option at the bottom. At the top, this arrow is reply. This other arrow is reply to all. This is forward, archive, folders of move to the option to start composing a message and also if you have any other options missing you can tap in the three dots what i actually want to do is report this email has a spam when you want to report an email has a spam from your mail application you can choose different ways to do it you can tap and hold onto the message on the left and when you tap and hold onto that message, you will see information such as ability to reply, forward, mark the email, move the message, and archive the message and block the sender. So if you ever encounter a message that has been very annoying for you, you can block the sender if you want to do that. How that look like when you tap in block sender and it will show this kind of indicator here that proof that the message has been sent and also you have a notification at the top that says this message is from a sender in your block list if you ever want to change that you can go to your preferences and it will give you much more details about what email accounts you have been blocking until this point in your email application. I'm going to press my home button and I will be taken back to the home screen and I'm going to the mail app again. And that is how you can block a sender. Also, if you ever want to mark something as a spam and say that I'm going to use this as a reference, last time I press and hold onto the message. This time I'm gonna use this option right here at the bottom that looks like an arrow going to the left. And I know you might think they look the same, but they are not the same. If I press the one at the bottom, it will allow me to do things such as move the message to junk or even trash the message. The recommendation when you receive spam emails or phishing emails is to actually move them to junk. So whenever the email server receives that in the future, it will send it right away to that folder as opposed to allowing the message to end in your inbox. If I select move to junk, now that email will disappear from that email list 
and I can find it by going in the little square and I will go to junk. The junk folder is to place all those messages that you have marked as spam or suspicious will be too. The email server will have a pattern and when you mark those kind of messages, they will end here, right? This folder has up to 30 days to delete this type of messages for good. Or if you ever want to delete messages all at once, you can again press and hold on to the message and delete message. That is a way that you can select an individual message that you want to remove. If you want to remove multiple messages, you can select in edit at the top. And when you select in edit at the top, it will show these little circles on the left and you can select multiple emails. You can delete them at once. So when I do that, it allows me to do a multiple selection. When I do a selection, I have these other options at the bottom, mark, move, or delete. If I tap in delete, they will be gone. Another thing you can do is move a message that accidentally end in your junk folder. And how would you do that? So if you open this message, for example, you can go at the bottom or also at the top. If you open this message, for example, you can go at the top and use the folder. And when you tap in that folder, it will allow you to move that from the current folder it is, which is junk, to the actual inbox, because this is not a spam email. And this will happen often with this folder. Sometimes emails will end here because the filter of the email server is not 100% accurate. And every now and then, you need to check this folder to ensure things are right. So I'm going back to the square on the top. And here I also have trash. The trash icon or the trash folder is where all the messages that I delete come to. And you can delete messages in different ways. You can find the trash icon on the top and the current message is open, will be delete. And whenever I press in that, we'll start deleting each of those messages. If you don't want to do that, you can also wait for your email account to delete that for you. And it will be in a term of 30 days. And whenever you press in that trash, it will start clearing up your things until nothing is actual there. So that is your trash folder. How do you send it to the trash? You can go, for instance, your inbox. And from your inbox, you can find a message that you want to delete and say that you want to delete this message, for example. Remember, you can tap and hold onto the message on the left, but also use this arrow right here. Also, use the folder. So the folder can tell you where do you want to move this message, and you can select Move Message, and you can send it from the inbox to the trash, and it will send it there. If you want to do the tap and hold option, this is how it will look like. Right. It will also allow you to move message. And if you use the arrow at the bottom of the screen, you can tap in there and it will allow you to use the option trash message. All of these options do essentially the same. I'm going back to my mailboxes and I have navigate inbox, draft, junk and trash. The last thing that I have here is the same folder. So the same folder is the place you can refer to when you want to ensure a message has been sent. And say, for example, that I go to my draft. If you actually want to send an email, you can select that draft. And it will take you to edition mode. 
you can add, for instance, here, the only thing missing is the person I'm sending the email. And after to send that email, you can use the button at the top right, and it will be sending that message. When I go to my send folder, I'm gonna tap in send, and notice how the draft is no longer there, or the email that was in the draft is no longer there, and it will be now in my send folder. In your send folder, you can also see the email that you used to send a message, the person it was referred to, as well as the hour in which it was sent, and the content of that message. So there you are. I'm going to my second device, which is an Android device, to show you other email server. And if you pay attention, on my screen, I have an email application. Similar to what we saw with the mail application on the iPad, on Android, you also will have this email application or native application. As I mentioned, these applications meant to be much easier friendly and allow you to combine multiple email servers under the same email app. As opposed, if you have Yahoo, Gmail, or Outlook, these are specific accounts that allow you to have email accounts within the same server. Say, for instance, that I'm going to use the Yahoo Mail application. And the Yahoo Mail application will look pretty similar to what we saw with the Mail application. Obviously, if you are using a specific app, there are different things of appearance and where the buttons are located, but the core of the application is pretty much the same. If I use this Yahoo application, instead of having the paper and pen that we use to start composing a email, we can just press in there, and this is how we start creating one in Yahoo. But essentially, you have the two, the CC, the VCC, the subject, and the composing part. So similar to what we saw with the mail app, if you ever want to compose an email, notice how there is a blinking line right there. If you go to the bottom and you have a key in your keyboard that looks like a small keyboard, you can use different types of keyboards, including something is called the voice input. Depending on the model or brand of your device, mine is called Samsung because I'm using a Samsung device. You will find here Samsung, Huawei, and the name of the brand followed by voice input. When you use this option, and I'm gonna tap over that option, what is going to happen is that whatever you are going to say or are saying, it will be transcribed. So basically you will be using voice dictation services to convey your message as opposed to using a keyboard to write down things. And this is also how it's done in an Android device. So you will have to change the keyboard that you use to voice dictation in order to use that feature in your device. Notice how I have a pause button right here in the middle point, which is something I did not see in the iPad or iPhone demo. But if I tap here, it will pause whatever I'm saying. And whenever I want to activate that again, it will allow me to go back by tapping to talk. And again, whatever is being said after I press in that tap to talk will be conveyed in the form of a transcription on my screen. I will tap to pause once more. And if you ever want to go back to the regular keyboard, find the icon that looks like a keyboard on your screen. This is the icon. And it will take you back to the regular keyboard, which is the touch screen keyboard. So that is the way you can use voice dictation on an Android device. If you want to get out of here, something nice about the touchscreen devices and electronic devices is oftentimes 
you will find these arrows pointing to the left and it will take you back to the home page. Whenever you do an action, I don't know if you noticed that there was a communication of the action my email performed. So if he, I create a draft because I did not send that message right away, it will show a notification on my screen. Also, if I delete, for instance, an email, and I'm going to use this one right here, player FM, I'm gonna select over that email. And remember to delete and see options, you often can select pressing and holding onto the email, right? And there will be options at the bottom. Here I have delete. And when you delete, see how there is a notification here at the bottom. You will have a couple of seconds before you undo that action, which is something nice. If you make a mistake, you can use the undo thing and it won't delete or complete that action successfully. On the Yahoo application, where you see inbox at the bottom, notice how there is little arrows in there. And if you tap over them, it will show you the main folders of your Yahoo application. So here you will have information of the account you use, as well as the inbox, draft, send, all mail, spam, trash, and any other additional folders that you have. When you want to create a folder to organize things, you can, for instance, refer to the bottom of the screen and tap what it says, create new folder. What follows next is you having to give this a name and you can say, this is Cyber Seniors. And when you finish typing that, you just can select in OK. And notice how the notification that the folder is being created or has been created was shown. And now I can use any messages that I want to move to that folder to organize things much nicer in my inbox. So I can use this one as a reference. And I'm going to tap and hold on to that. When I do that, I will see my options at the bottom and I can go what it says, move. When I tap in move, it's going to show me the folders that I have available to move this email message to. So I create cyber seniors and this is related with cyber seniors. I can tap in there. And now that action has been complete. So that will remove my message from the mail inbox and clear things a little bit up and move it to the folder. And you can group different emails under different folders. And when you want to access them, you just have to refer to the inbox and go to the folder that you create to find things. Okay, go to reminders. Anything related with reminders would be here, right? So that is a nice way to group your emails so you don't have so much trouble also finding them after. If you ever see this star in any of your emails and you press in that star, meaning that this message will be moved to a folder that is called star, it will remain in your inbox, but it will be part of this star folder. I have come to the conclusion of my presentation today. Thank you so much for listening.